Last season I made a video detailing what I thought was the best Warlock build for PvP featuring Top Tree Dawnblade. But with nerfs to Icarus Dash really hurting that subclass, a new best subclass has emerged that is more dynamic and lethal than Top Tree Dawnblade, and that's Shadebinder. With the fragments and aspects I'll show you today, combined with the right mods and weapon loadout, you'll see you can tank a ton of damage and become a one-man wrecking crew in any PvP game mode. Starting with our abilities, and we have our Rift, and I'm going to recommend Healing Rift for this build, because this build is all about survivability. And of course, any ability that's going to allow you to regenerate your health quickly and while you're being shot at is going to pair very well with some of the fragments we're going to be talking about. Empowering Rift is not a bad option here, but I don't see it really fitting into this build. We're going to be using the Glacier Grenade a lot, and so it's going to block a lot of our sight lines and not really allow us to output maximum damage using our Empowering Rift. So that's why I'm choosing Healing Rift, because this build is going to be all about survivability and taking a lot of damage. Next, we have our jump. So we have Burst Glide here, and this is really just the best jump overall in Warlock. It's gonna allow you to move as quickly as possible around the map and do some semblance of Warlock skating. And overall, it's just gonna make the movement on Warlock feel the best out of any of the Warlock jumps. A lot of these other jumps are gonna make you feel very floaty or slow, almost like your character's like stuck in mud. Burst Glide is gonna give you that nice burst and momentum, to really fly around the map and get out of bad spots. Next, we have Penumbral Blast for our melee ability. Don't really have an option here, but this ability has received a ton of nerfs in the past. So you do have to be a lot more accurate with it. And because of that, I do recommend using it primarily defensively. This is gonna allow you to get the most out of this ability because people are gonna be pushing uh, at you. And so when you're in that defensive stance or backpedaling from an enemy, this is gonna force them to be in more of a straight line, which makes it easier to land your Penumbral Blast and get that initial freeze and either stop them in their tracks, allow you to create space or freeze them and then close the gap on them and secure the kill. Lastly, for our abilities, we have Glacier Grenade, and this is the most important piece of this build, arguably even more important than Aspects and Fragments, because this build does not work without the Glacier Grenade. You do have Cold Snap and Dust Field, but they've received so many nerfs at this point that they're not even worth using. And Glacier Grenade just has the most utility out of almost any grenade in Destiny 2, because you have to think about one, how much damage these things can take. If you throw down a Glacier Grenade, it just takes a ton of damage. So if you throw it to block off a corridor, it's gonna be a minute before someone's able to break through and get through this Glacier Grenade and be able to get to you or get to whatever vantage point they're trying to get to. So it's great for blocking off points, blocking off heavy, or if you're in a scenario where you suddenly get pushed by two people and you're one shot, you can throw this down in front of you and create that space and create that separation that you need to either pop a rift or get away and get your health back. And on top of that, they're also great for just freezing enemies. If you throw them right at an enemy, they have a pretty generous hitbox or radius that they can freeze enemies in, allowing you to get that easy freeze and then shatter the crystals to get secure the kill. So I can't speak to how important Glacier Grenade is gonna be for this build, but even beyond that, it just has the most utility out of almost any grenade in Destiny 2, and is gonna be an easy number one choice in this build. Getting into our aspects, first we have Ice Flare Bolts, shattering a frozen target spawn seekers that track and freeze other nearby targets. These are not nearly as powerful as they used to be, but they do still come in handy here and there. Where you'll occasionally get that, you'll shatter a target or get a kill someone who's frozen, and you will get that surprise freeze on another enemy that's near them. So it does make for some good multi kill opportunities. But overall, the most important thing for this is just having the two fragment slots so we can have as many fragments as possible on our Shadebinder subclass. And personally, for this build, the other option would be Glacial Harvest or Frost Pulse. And we didn't really want to use either of those because they're not gonna add anything to our lethality or our potential for more kills. Frost Pulse is great, but I've noticed that someone has to be basically right on top of you as you're popping your Rift or for it to get that freeze. And so it's not really a situation we always want to be in. And then next we have Bleak Watcher. Press and hold the grenade button to convert your grenade into a stasis turret that fires slowing projectiles at nearby targets. And this is another really underrated aspect in my opinion, and one that people don't use enough. And it really just adds to the overall utility on this subclass. I already talked about how great the Glacier Grenade is, but then the fact that we can hold it and get that freezing turret is really useful against teams that like to lock down a zone and keep play kind of campy or slow and they're really just holding down a lane this is a great way to really break that hold they have on a map you can plan with your team for you to hold your grenade and then once you throw the bleak watcher behind them and it pops that's when you and your team can fly in because they are either forced to deal with you and your team 
or take the time to kill the bleak watcher and the bleak watcher does take a little bit of time to kill it doesn't die super quick but it doesn't stay alive forever but it can buy you enough time to really close the gap on your enemy and create a nice distraction or if they decide not to contend with it they're all going to be relatively slowed which is going to give you the advantage in that engagement for your fragments and the first one you're going to want to run is whisper of chains while you are near frozen targets or a friendly stasis crystal take reduced damage from targets and it gives you additional 10 recovery and so what this fragment does is gives you 25 percent damage reduction for enemies in the crucible and this is when you're near those crystals and it has a range of about 15 meters and this is really the key to this build we're going to talk more about other aspects as well that continue to improve it but this really is the key here is this damage reduction and pairing that with your glacier grenade and this allows you to really just throw down your glacier grenade and really tank a ton of damage with these glacier grenades and a uh, whisper of chains it really allows you to challenge any fight this is kind of like the stag but before the stag got its recent buff and this allows you to kind of go into any fight and really challenge any 1v1 or even 2v1 with that damage reduction because now with this fragment 140 hand cannons cannot three tap you it takes about four headshots to kill you and that's if they're all landing headshots and then you combine that with what we talked about earlier in our rift and you're really going to be able to absorb a bunch of damage in this build next we have whisper of rending kinetic weapons do increase damage to stasis crystals and frozen targets this is great because now when we throw down our glacier grenade and we're getting that damage resistance we can use whisper of rending to basically it only takes one shot from a hand cannon a 140 hand cannon to break and shatter the crystal so they're much easier to shatter your own crystals or kill enemy targets that you freeze what this is great for is throwing down that glacier grenade you get that damage resistance that 25 percent damage resistance and as you're working around that what you can do is tactfully shoot one or two of the crystals to kind of create your own cover with the glacier grenade so now you've created your own cover you have that damage resistance and now you're able to do that damage to your enemies and like i said earlier you can create that separation with the glacier grenade get your health back shoot a hole in the glacier grenade and actually peak shot using the glaciers for cover with that damage resistance using whisper of rending whisper of rending makes the glaciers a lot easier to break as i stated earlier and allows us to really use them to our advantage and break them when we please turn them into our own cover that we kind of effectively peak shot through or if we freeze an enemy it allows us to break those crystals a lot faster and effectively shatter or kill the enemy that's frozen in the, the glacier grenade faster as well then we have whisper of fissures increases the damage and size of the burst of stasis when you destroy a stasis crystal or defeat a frozen target and you can see how this could pair amazingly with whisper of rending because now we throw that glacier grenade and when we're shooting those crystals enemy enemies that are on the other side or near it are going to get some extra damage from whisper of fissures and it does a fair amount of damage guys i mean you don't got you just got to look at hunters and their shatter dive whisper of fissures is the main reason shatter dive is so strong and so i love throwing down a glacier grenade and with whisper running being able to destroy those, those glacier grenades very easily and then whisper of fissures you're gonna be able to do that additional damage this is great for enemies that are around cover or you know when there's a lot of enemies around your glacier grenade and you get that initial freeze you can just focus on shooting the crystals and usually you're going to shatter the enemy that's frozen in the crystal as well as either severely damage or kill the enemies that are around it and if you're doing this up close again within 15 meters so actually not that close at all you're also going to be getting that damage resistance while you're doing this so this allows you on top of your weapon to have another way of dealing damage as enemies are around your crystal because as you're kind of seeing this build is all about playing around your glacier grenade taking advantage of that damage resistance and then using the fact that we're running whisper of rending to easily break the crystals and do that additional damage from whisper of fissures then for our last fragment to really make sure we're getting the most out of our grenade and getting it back as quickly as possible i have here whisper of torment you gain grenade energy each time you take damage from targets now it's important with this fragment to know it does have kind of like a cooldown doesn't show anything on your screen but basically what happens is you'll get chunks of grenade energy back it's not every single time you get damaged but probably about every other time and you're going to get some grenade energy back very quickly especially if you're focused around like i mentioned playing around your glacier grenade and using that damage resistance 
and that shatter damage from whisper of fissures to your advantage and using it as cover because you're gonna be taking a lot of damage and you're gonna be able to take a lot of damage because of that damage resistance combined with your rift and all those things and this can allow us to get our grenade energy back very quickly throw down another glacier grenade or hold it get our grenade back and be able to use our bleak watcher uh, stasis turret to really throw off our enemy any one of those things this allows us to get our grenade back as quickly as possible now another fragment you could use if you wanted to and that also works very well instead of whisper of torment is you could run whisper of shards where when you shatter that stasis crystal it gives you a temporary boost to your grenade recharge rate also gives you plus 10 resilience so if you're lacking resilience this is also another reason to run this fragment and what, uh, what is nice about this is because we're constantly breaking our glacier grenade you're gonna be constantly getting that uh temporary boost to our grenade recharge rate and so you're gonna be constantly again just getting our grenade back as quickly as possible and so in this build whatever we can do to increase our discipline is gonna really help with getting our grenade back as much as possible so we can get our glacier grenade really take advantage of that 25 percent damage reduction and then pairing that with whisper of running to break those crystals very easily and create our own cover or use it to quickly shatter the crystals that are near our enemies and do that damage from whisper of fissures getting into our stat for this build we're going to start with the most important things first and then i'll kind of break down why i landed where i landed on some of my other stats and so per always with any of my builds i always start with recovery you're going to want to get 100 recovery on basically any build just because this is going to give you the best chance of surviving your fights can allow you to get your health back quicker and for warlock it's doubly important because it decreases the cooldown of our rift uh all the way down to 41 seconds so you're gonna be getting it incredibly quickly so that along with the faster health regen makes going for uh 100 recovery an awesome choice because then it's going to increase our overall survivability pretty straightforward there uh next most important stat for this build even though it's not one of the highest is going to be your discipline of course because a lot of this build focuses around our glacier grenade and so we want to make sure we are having as much discipline as possible to reduce that cooldown as much as possible so making sure you're slotting your mods accordingly for that next i would say it's going to be intellect intellect is super important in this build as well it can help us get our shade binder super back as much as possible and we haven't talked about shade binder super a lot but needless to say it's incredibly powerful one of the best counters to other supers in the game and so i typically hold it as like more of a defensive super to shut down and reduce the damage a uh, enemy team could be doing with their own super and then from there, I would probably say for me, the next most important thing is gonna be resilience. And I typically recommend running tier six or higher if you can without sacrificing too many other stats. I like tier six because it allows you to survive a couple more ticks of chaos reach damage. And it seems to just give you that just right amount of health where you can just tank things a little bit more, especially when you combine that with the damage resistance we're gonna be uh, taking advantage of with Whisper of Chains. I feel like these two things really complement each other. Uh, as you can see here, I'm running a 40 or 44 mobility. Uh, this has just been kind of the sweet spot for me. It's where it, feel, it feels like my uh, sprint speed, uh, I'm not sorry, my sprint speed, but just my movement speed and jump feel in a good spot to where maybe it's not obviously as fast as something like transverse steps, but it helps me when I'm peak shotting in and out of cover and my strafe speed makes it feel just a little bit faster. So I'm not just standing in mud or feeling like I'm standing in mud. And lastly, we have our melee. And as we talked about earlier, the melee on this class, our subclass has been nerfed a lot. So I don't invest too, too much in this. I try to land around tier five as just like a healthy middle ground. So my cooldown is not super long either. But ultimately, this is probably the least important thing on this subclass for me because of how little I use that ability. And when I do use it, it's mainly defensively. Jumping into our loadout, and I'm gonna start with our armor and mods. Jumping into our headpiece, I have a mobility mod and I have shotgun targeting and hand cannon targeting. And to run both of those, you're gonna need relatively high stat armor because they do take up quite a few slots. Uh, but this just allows me to make sure my slug shotgun, which I prefer, is gonna be a little bit more forgiving. And then my hand cannon is gonna be a little bit more forgiving when it comes to hitting those headshots. For our chest piece, I'm running unflinching shotgun aim and unflinching hand cannon aim. So same kind of deal as the headpiece using mods that are gonna make my shotgun or slug shotgun and hand cannon and all that we'll talk about later, just as effective as possible and try to reduce the amount of flinch uh, they get for when I'm taking damage to make them as accurate as possible. 
For my leg pieces, I'm running Radiant Light. This gives me plus 20 strength. Again, just reducing that cooldown of our Penumbral Blast. And then this is a newer mod. We got Shotgun Holster. Uh, gradually reload your stowed shotguns over time. Multiple copies of this perk stack to reduce the time it takes to full reload. And as I'll talk in a little bit, I run Ace of Spades a lot. And using something like this allows me to continue to use or take advantage of Memento Mori because Memento Mori goes away when you stow your hand cannon. This allows me to take advantage of Memento Mori without having to switch to my shotgun to reload it and lose that damage boosting perk. And I find it just pretty effective and I prefer this actually now over something like Shotgun Scavenger. Lastly, for our Warlock Bond, I'm running Powerful Friends, which gives me plus 20 mobility. And this allows me to, again, just reach that mobility cap of 40 that I'm looking for to give me that nice feel to my Warlock movement. And then I'm running Double Outreach, again, just to help continue reduce the amount of cooldown for my melee ability. Now, if you wanted to run something different here, if you want to just really double down on getting your grenade, I have another Warlock Bond where I'm running Double Bomber, where it reduces your grenade cooldown when using your class ability. So if you really wanted to go all out on getting your grenade back as quickly as possible this would be my other recommendation but for me i like to have a nice balance of the stats and so that is why i go with outreach and powerful friends on my bond getting into our weapons and you guys you can see here i'm running ace of spades and in my opinion this is the best hand cannon in the game if i was playing for money this is the hand cannon I would be using. The fact that you get radar at all times when you're aiming down sights really helps with maintaining a, your awareness of what's going on around you and not getting uh, someone getting the drop on you when you're ADSing for a very long time. I also really like this because if we're playing around our glacier grenade and we're shooting it to create our own cover and peak shot through it, we can really hard scope with our ace of spades as long as we want because we have that radar always up. So we're not gonna get caught off guard by anyone trying to work their way around our crystal and because those crystals are so big and sometimes it can be hard to tell where people are coming from it's nice to always have that raider up and of course mental mori the damage of this perk is absolutely insane and the flinch and the range and it just really takes this weapon to a whole nother level and as i kind of touched on earlier running this with shock and holster i feel is uh a nice synergy because now you don't again have to store or stow your ace of spades to just reload your shotgun. You can count on your shotgun being reloaded a majority of the time. Now, if I'm not running ace of spades, I do prefer to actually run thorn uh, just because of the damage uh, or pressure I feel this gun puts on other enemies because of the damage over time. And the fact it delays the recovery. And I just love also the high handling on it when I'm quick swapping between my hand cannon and my shotgun with Thorn, it just feels so smooth and so seamless. And I really overall like the feel of this weapon. What I will say is if you don't prefer either of these exotic hand cannons, another great option in the kinetic slot is of course the chaperone. This thing is absolute monster when it comes to special weapons and is easily the best shotgun in the game, uh, especially with Roadborne active. It gives you a very generous hitbox and you can just absolutely map people uh, from so far away. And this gun is even better now, especially with the nerfs to spread our pellet shotguns. For our special, I know I just talked about the chaperone, but I actually prefer to run Sojourner's Tail. And the primary reason is because I like to use an exotic hand cannon, either this Ace of Spades or a Thorn, as I mentioned. My Sojourner's Tail, I really love. It's got Hammer Forge, Light Mag, moving target so it gets a little bit better target acquisition and then opening shot which is going to give make it just a little bit more generous in terms of the ability to hit a headshot and the range and then throw in that range masterwork on top of that this thing's got absolutely insane range and very good handling uh if i haven't talked about this in the past handling is a very important stat for me i like my guns to react as quickly as i do and be as responsive as i am when i'm trying to put inputs in and respond in a fight and handling for me really helps with that and for our heavy i just run commemoration machine gun i just usually typically lean towards an lmg uh in this slot just because again it's something that you can just get a couple of kills with and keep any of your sprees going but honestly not something that i would say really matters in this particular build so use whatever you prefer in the heavy slot talking about the exotics you want to run with this build and for me my favorite exotic hands down what i think is still the best exotic for warlocks no matter really what subclass you're running is going to be a fidian aspect weapons ready and reload very quickly melee range is extended and as i talked about earlier it's super important for me to have weapons that respawn and react as fast as I do or as my reaction time is. The weapons with low handling or weapons that feel a bit sluggish, I don't really like for my play style. And so having the fitting aspects really 
lifts that barrier for me and allows me to have weapons that just feel super smooth and snappy. And then adding on to the fact with hand cannon dexterity, so faster ready and so speed for hand, can hand cannons, and then shotgun dexterity, faster ready and so speed for shotguns. As you'll see in a lot of the footage, I'm constantly doing some damage with my hand cannon, switching to my slug and doing 150 body damage. And that allows for an easy one shot body kill with your slug shotgun. So using Ophidian in combination with shotgun dexterity and hand cannon dexterity allows your swap speed to be almost instant. And it'll just allows you to output a ton of damage in a very short period of time. And you're gonna win a lot of gunfights because other players or classes are going to be having to deal with slower handling, slower spot swap speeds, slower ADS speeds, and Ophidians combined with these two mods here and the dexterities are going to really remove uh, that downside for you. And it's going to allow you to win a lot of gunfights. So that's why I absolutely love the Ophidian aspect. But if you're looking for something else, of course, you could still run uh, the stag. Uh, link in the description for my video that I did talking about all the benefits of the stag and why you should be using it but it also pairs very well with Whisper of Chains. Whisper of Chains and the stack actually do stack in, turn of, in terms of damage resistance. Uh, I think it gets up to about 35% damage resistance. So you can tank even more damage than what we were talking about earlier. And so this is a great option if you really just wanna take that damage resistance to a whole nother level, especially if you throw down a Rift, you throw down your, your Glacier Grenade and you have the stag on, it's gonna be pretty difficult to kill you. So this is definitely another great option for exotics if you're not feeling the Fidian aspect. And then lastly, an old favorite, but still something that's very good, you have transversive steps. And this is just great for just improving the overall movement on Warlock. So if you love Warlock, but you feel like the movement is really a sticking point for you, try transversive steps. They are gonna make your movement feel a lot smoother. You're gonna get around the map a lot quicker. And on top of that, it's gonna make sure your weapons are automatically reloaded, which is a nice little icing on the cake for this exotic. Not a lot of lethality to this exotic, but it's really just gonna improve overall feel of your Warlock. Overall, Shadebinder has been my new favorite subclass to run. And when you combine the damage resistance with the utility of Glacier Grenades, along with the free stats you get from some of these fragments, it really puts this build and subclass in a league of its own. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other build video featuring Bottom Tree Stormcaller at the top, or if you're looking to see why the stag pairs so well with this build, check out the video on the bottom.